What's up, Raider Nation? Uh, we're back with another video. Unfortunately, it's Super Bowl week, and of course, we're not in it. Uh, we have Mark Davis's two favorite teams, uh, the Chiefs and the 49ers, battling it out in Las Vegas. So today, we're just going to be giving you guys some predictions and some player props and, and things like that. Yeah, big day coming up. Um, tomorrow's Tomorrow's the big one. Season is finally coming to a close. What a rocky, bumpy kind of season it was for us. But, um, you know, dawn of a new era, hopefully, will start on Monday um, after the Super Bowl and we'll start to make some moves, you know. Uh, but aside from the Raiders' disappointing season, we thought we'd make a video and kind of talk about the Super Bowl since, I mean, everyone talks about the Super Bowl all the time, right? I mean, you know, who doesn't watch the Super Bowl? If you don't watch the Super Bowl, you have an issue. You better turn on the TV and watch the Super Bowl. It's one of the biggest spectacles you'll ever see in your life. So, um, but yeah, definitely not ideal for Raider fans. Chiefs and 49ers. Um, I was there last time Chiefs and 49ers played and it was a complete shit show. The 49ers were just, you know, on paper, you know, supposed to win by a lot. And of course, Patrick Mahomes proved them wrong. Like he always does. Uh, so that being said, yeah, I mean, if we jump in right into predictions, I got Kansas City winning this one, no problem. Um, there'll be no pressure. Patrick Mahomes won't be touched. He's going to have the over on the passing completions, which is over, um, I think it was 30-something passing completions. I don't know if you remember. Uh, uh, I'm not sure the completion, but the yards was 259.5. Okay, it was it was over 25 and a half. So 100% over 25 completions. He's going to he's going to have around 30 is my guess. Um he's going to have more than one and a half touchdowns, which is another over that we're going to go for. Um and rushing attempts over four and a half, I think. Patrick Mahomes is just going to he's going to run crazy. Um Yeah. Yeah, no, I agree, and I've been watching the Niners pretty closely this season. Um, and, you know, their defense, people say their defense is really good, and it's been good for the last few seasons, but this year it's not been the same. Like, they're just – there's random guys playing it on the D-line. You got Clee Farrell starting for them, and then Chase Young has been really bad, and their secondary is is pretty bad too. They don't have a lot of guys with Hufanga going down. It's been rough for the Niners' defense, so I think – for both of us, we agree that Mahomes is – we've seen a firsthand in the division. Like, he's insane. He's a magician. And I don't think the Niners are going to be able to stop the magician this time around. So, yeah, like, over 260 yards, like, I think that's pretty obvious. One and a half touchdowns is – that's that's like stealing at this point. To to bet over 1.5 touchdowns is – I think that's a given. And then I think for the completions, like, their offense isn't – it's not bomb passes. It's dink and dunks down the field. So 25 completions is he does it on the regular. Um, no matter how bad his receivers are going to be, like Mahomes is going to be there putting the ball in the right spots. And I think his receivers are going to come through on the Super Bowl like they always do. Um, so, yeah, like I – as much as I want the Niners to win because I just – I don't want to see Mahomes win another Super Bowl. I just think that they're too good. I think – it's actually baffling to me how the Niners are favorites. They're two-and-a-half-point favorites, and they're clearly the worst team. Like it's just – I don't even know how they're favored, but yeah, like I think we're both going to go KC as much as it hurts us to say that. I think KC's the better team. Yeah, as much as it hurts us to say, you know, KC's going to win, I think we just know in our hearts, we know Mahomes. And like Jack Jones said, in order to stop the act, you got to stop the magician. And it just doesn't seem like Nick Bo or Joey, Bo Nick Bosa, sorry. I don't know this Bosa, that Bosa, no one really cares, but Nick Bosa and Chase Young and Javon Kinlaw, all those guys they have on the D-line, Eric Armstead, there's no chance that they're even going to get close to Mahomes. And the only way you can beat Mahomes is the way we beat them. The last loss they had was against us on Christmas Day, and we obliterated Mahomes. We hit the, we beat the shit out of him. Like, we hit him on every single play, even, like, after the flag – we had a couple of those where we just hit him on the, we just knocked him on the ground. Even after he threw the ball, we just leveled him and the refs were being generous with the flags. But I think we got called for one. I think I remember back like all those months ago. Now we got Ooh. called for just one 
uh, of the roughing the passer calls. I think it was 97 Janarius Robinson threw him on the ground after the play. Um, but overall, in order to beat Mahomes, you got to hit him. And if you don't send pressure and you don't hit him, I know Kyle Shanahan, okay, like he's an offensive mind coach. And, but then that leaves the defensive coordinator, Steve Wilkes, who is notoriously not been the best at sending pressure. Um, I think he was with Carolina last year and the year before. And then he was the interim coach for Carolina last year after they fired Matt Rule. Um, somehow he ended up being the 49ers D coordinator, which is pretty impressive actually. But I think that all, I don't think it matters. I think whoever they have, like you said, uh, Talano Hofunga is out, torn ACL. Secondary is thin already. Marquez Valdez scaling his speed. And they're getting Sky Moore back, too, who scored in the Super Bowl last year. Kadarius Tony has no hands, so don't really need to worry about him. But if you really want to win this game, you've got to stop the running game, and you got to stop Patrick Mahomes, number one. Yeah, and if it was our defense playing, I would have a lot more confidence. If it was a Niners defense of old, I would have more confidence. Because even in the Super Bowl they played a few years ago, it was interesting because the Chiefs had the number one offense and the Niners had the number one defense. But this year it's kind of switched, right? Because the Chiefs, their offense is always going to be good, but it, was, it's not, it wasn't all-time great good this year. It was just at middle of the pack, whereas their defense is what carried them throughout the season. Um, and the Niners, it's been their offense. With Brock Purdy, who we're going who we're gonna to get into in a little bit, Kyle Shanahan just dialing up plays for him, and their offense has been pretty elite. But it comes down to who do I trust more, the Niners' defense or the Chiefs' offense? Those are the two weaklings of these teams. And obviously, I'm going to say Mahomes. I got to I got to ride with him. Um, and then we're going to move on to Purdy now and the whole offensive side. I just don't see it with Brock Purdy. Like I, I was I was debating with a fellow Niner fan of mine. Um, he he's not even a top twenty QB at this point. Like he, when you watch him play, he puts the ball in harm's way. Shout out Miggy. Yeah, Miggy's the guy that I was talking about. <laughs> it was Miggy, but. Yeah, so he just puts the ball in harm's way a lot. And there's throws. It's like a Jimmy G, Derek Carr throw where you're just like, where is he going with that? And in the Super Bowl, that all that shit gets exposed. And that's why there's a there's a bet. You can bet over zero interceptions. Like, is basically the bet is, will Brock Purdy throw one pick? And I think that's where we got to go yes on that based on what we've seen. And even in the, the Packer and Lion game, there's been drop picks, like right in the hands, like pick sixes. Diamond lane pick sixes that have been dropped. And the Chiefs secondary is going to mess around. They're going to catch those pick sixes. So uh, Purdy is – he's been shaky throughout the playoffs, and I think it's going to get exposed in the Super yeah, Bowl. Yeah, I think, I think Purdy's going to go ahead and get one Chucky head from me. I think Purdy's going to have, you know, not a good game. I think he has a chance, and if there was a bet, I'd probably bet that he has a chance to break Gannon's interception record or at least tie it five interceptions – in the Super Bowl, because I think I, I honestly think that if I had to pick the halftime score, I'd probably say it's going to be a high. I mean, I, I mean, everyone says they think it's going to be a low scoring game, but I don't see it when you have Patrick Mahomes and Travis Kelsey. Like, there's no way it's going to be a low scoring game. I think halftime might be like 27 to three or 27 to 10 or something like that. But Chiefs are going to score a lot of points. And I think that's my bold prediction, which it might sound really stupid after tomorrow, but. You heard it here first. I I think Kansas City is going to score a lot of points, especially in the first half. You know, in the second half, they might take it easy a bit. Maybe Blaine Gabbert will come in the game. But the 49ers are kind of just a pushover team. Like, if you look at it statistically, they should have lost to Green Bay. That's number one. They were getting blown out by the Lions in the first half and somehow came back and won. I don't know how they did that. Lions kind of just choked in the end. But the Green Bay game, you gotta really consider like that game was over. It was gonna be it was gonna be Packers Lions in the end, or it was gonna be it would have been pack that was a wild though, that was a divisional round. So it would have been Packers Lions in the NFC championship, which would have been which would have been super crazy. But um I think all eyes are on Kansas City here. And you know, overall it's gonna be a Kansas City game. That stadium is going to be taken over again by Kansas City fans. I was there last time Kansas City played there against us, and it was just really disgusting with the 
people and you know screaming at Raider fans and being like sorry like sorry you suck like and all that shit like I FaceTime my dad and I was sit I was at my seat and this dude like just looks over my shoulder and says sorry they're gonna lose I turned around and I was like yo fuck you I'm like what the hell and then sure enough we were up 14-0 and I was like literally like doing the whining thing at him he was sitting behind me and then we fucking lost I I left in like the with like seven minutes left in the fourth yeah we got revenge later though so that's yeah, that's yeah, but I mean, ass, yeah, team. knowing us, knowing me, I could go into talking about all the games we should have won this year, but we'll leave it at the Super Bowl. Um, I think another thing to point out is another one of the bets we went through is Debo over 15 and a half yards. I think rushing, he definitely gonna get over 15 and a half rushing. They're gonna run the ball to him quite a bit. I think they'll. They didn't run the Debo package a lot this year. They didn't run the ball to Debo like the wide back he used to be because he w- was getting hurt a lot. He got hurt a lot this year too. But I think 49ers and Shanahan surprised the Chiefs this this game and start running the ball a little bit to Debo and letting him kind of run free. Um, so we'll see what happens. Yeah, like you even saw with, with our game, Zeus White went crazy. He had like 150 yards on them. So like obviously McCaffrey's going to get his. Like I, we're not, not saying that, but – like it seems like in these big games they go to Debo when when it's not working or in a clutch spot. I think Debo will get the ball and fifteen and a half years, he can bust out in one play. Like that's not like a huge amount. Yeah, not big. Not one big. Run. So I would say over fifteen and a half rushing yards for Debo is put that in the bank. And and the other thing is that last time these two teams played, they were very different teams, of course. But if you look at the 49ers wise, they had a lot of the same pieces on offense. Obviously, they didn't have McCaffrey. They had Raheem Mostert instead, which is quite a big upgrade. Getting, you know, McCaffrey's a Swiss Army knife, can do everything. Um, but quarterback wise, I mean, I don't really see that big a difference between Jimmy G and Brock Purdy. Besides, Brock Purdy can throw a little further, I think, or quite a bit further, maybe, maybe like 10, 15 yards further downfield, which is really, you know, it's obviously impressive. But then again, Jimmy G never really had an arm. Um, but overall, I think it's safe to say that quarterback play on that side is going to be awful. You know, Mahomes is going to get the spotlight, rightfully so. <clears throat> and um, yeah, I guess we could do our score predictions. Yeah, I would say, obviously, we both got the Chiefs winning. I think Chiefs are going to go up a lot. I think in the beginning and the Niners will kind of get, they'll get some garbage time points in the fourth. The score will be closer than what it actually felt like is what I'm saying. So I would say Kansas city, 31 Niners, 20. That's what I'm going to go with. 31, 20. That was the same score as the last Super Bowl. Funny enough. (laughs) Yeah. Well, I didn't, It it was 20, it was 20 to 10 with seven minutes left in the fourth. And Kansas City scored three touchdowns to end the game. They had that. They had the um. They had the one, and then they had the uh big run by uh the last touchdown was Damian Williams had a huge run. It was like fifty yards or something. I remember. Well, then I'll just change to thirty-one twenty-three. Then I don't want the same score. I got to change it up a little bit. <laughs> and for me, I would give it. I would say thirty-eight seventeen. It's kind of like where I'm heading with it. I think 49ers will have about three points at halftime. Um, score a couple of garbage time touchdowns. But I think 38-17 is kind of what I'm leaning. Um, and, of course, it hurts us to say this. Like, don't just think we're saying this because, oh, we want Mahomes to win. Like, come on, we're a Raiders channel. We're the silver and black attack. Like, don't be stupid. Like, we just aren't – we're just being realistic here. Because everyone always thinks, oh, 49ers are gonna win, 49ers are gonna win, they're gonna do well. Like, no, nah, they're not gonna, they're not gonna do I don't think they're gonna do very well. Um, and I don't get the fact that all these Raider fans hate the 49ers so much. I mean, they play them once every four years. Like, it's not even that big of a deal. Like, okay, being crosstown rivals was one thing, but like statistically in the 70s and 80s and 90s there was really no rivalry like between the Raiders and 49ers. It was really just in the early 2000s a bit, like when Jerry Rice switched teams and stuff, like people like got upset 
and then the fan got killed at Candlestick one time. And but I mean, I don't see a point in you know considering 49ers a rival anymore. And trust me, I've been a fan since the beginning. I've been a fan since 2008, and I I really don't see um the 49ers is a big rival, especially because they've done just so much more than us as a franchise. They've had better ownership. You know, they've, they've won more Super Bowls. You know, they've definitely done correct by their roster every year. Even us in the nineties, like we had great rosters still even in the nineties, but Al Davis found a way to fuck it up, getting rid of Marcus Allen and letting him go to Kansas city. I think that's the kind of things Bartolo would have never done. And You know, that's just a little difference between us and them. You know, you can't hate them for being good and having five Super Bowls. You can only hate us for having horrible ownership that's continued on, inherited by the sun, and, um, you know, not doing great things with great rosters. Yeah. I will say, though, from our experience, there's so many bandwagon Niner fans out there, which piss me off. Like, he goes to USC, I go to UCLA. And you'll meet people from the Bay Area who are like, oh, yeah, I'm a diehard Niner fan. And they just know, like, they just know the guys on offense who from fantasy football. Like, they don't know. If I ask them who, like, who Fonga is, they're like, oh, they don't know who that is. So, like, these guys, uh, there's so many bandwagon Niner fans out there, which piss me off. More or, so than the Chiefs. If you ask them who Frank Gore is or Colin Kaepernick, they might know Colin Kaepernick for obvious reasons. But they'll have no clue who Frank Gore was or you know, who Anquan Bolden is or Navarro Bowman, who just signed with the Chargers to be their coach, to be the linebackers coach. Under Harbaugh? Wow. Yeah, because he played for Harbaugh, right? So, I mean, kind of makes sense. Kind of makes good sense. But I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what happens there. Chargers are – I think we're going to do a whole video on the Chargers before the season starts. We're going to do three separate videos analyzing all three of our division rivals i think that's that's going to be what we're going to do and for the chargers one i mean it's not going to be looking very good especially for jim harbaugh's old ass coming out of college and trying to you know win in the nfl i don't think it's going to be very good but other than that i'm trying to think of anything else we need to talk about about the super bowl i mean we're going to be watching it together we're going to be going live for the first time actually in person you know, trying to just give a few reactions to damn Kansas City, San Francisco. and But I'm glad I'm not in Vegas, man. Like, I, I mean, I was planning on going to this game, like, again. um, But obviously everything that happened with my grandpa, um, just it kind of impossible. But it, it's like, why would I want to be there? You know, it's a shit show. I mean, Vegas is only so big, you know, like, with thousand, like, you know, like, millions of people like piling into the strip like it's probably disgusting honestly um to say the least but we'll see what happens and uh yeah Raider Nation we appreciate the likes and subscribes um we saw we gained a couple new subscribers yesterday so we appreciate that I'm gonna get back into editing the shorts and getting the shorts out to you because you know I know you guys liked a few of those they did really well um especially with our with our brian rankings which we have a lot of fun doing so we're gonna get a lot more of those out this week and um yeah we'll see you guys tomorrow thanks for your nation